What movie can you watch over and over without it ever getting old? That is a great question that I deeply appreciate, which brings me to two crazy confessions. I told you I was a little off, but Ernestine to this day makes fun of me over two movies that if they ever pop up on the movie channel when I have time, such as Saturday morning on the treadmill, or maybe Friday night as I'm waiting for her to finish preparing dinner for us, if they pop up and I've got a minute, I watch them like a zombie. And you will never guess what those two movies are, but I'm willing to confess to you why I love both, why I'm addicted to watching both, and I just watch them over and over with no thought. I, I, I just get absorbed into the screen and I know every line and, and every plot twist, obviously, I know them cold. The first is rounders, rounders. I, I just, I start watching and I can't stop watching because that final Texas Hold'em confrontation, the final showdown between Teddy KGB and the Matt Damon character, it just remains enthralling for me and I know who wins. That's the point, I know who wins. But there's just something so convincing about John Malkovich as that taunting Russian bully who, who just as soon see Matt Damon's character broke and battered out in the back alley by his henchman grandma, who's a guy, and, and Malkovich just sells me on the fact that I fear him and I loathe him and I find it deliciously satisfying that Matt Damon just cleans him out in the final confrontation. And to hear Malkovich, check, 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 all you do is check, check, check. It, it just gives me chills to even say it right now. I'm addicted to watching Rounders because I love the competition and I love how Matt Damon's character wins the way he wins in the end and then exits stage left with the money to pay off his professor who had loaned him his life savings, says goodbye to Gretchen Mall, hops in the cab, and he is bound for the World Series of Poker Tournament in Las Vegas. I love that, I got that inside of me. Which brings me to my second movie I can't take my eyes off and you won't believe this one either, it's 10 Cup. I'm addicted to 10 Cup because I play golf and 10 Cup gets golf. It's so real to me. I relate to Kevin Costner's character, that gopher broke driving range pro, who winds up leading the US Open and refusing to lay up on the final hole and blowing the whole tournament by hitting, what, five shots in the water until he's got his, la down to his last golf ball and he tries it again with his three wood over the water on 18, the par five, and he holds it just to prove to himself he could fly the water with that three wood. I got so much of that in me. I grew up playing all the gambling games that they play in Tin Cup. Part of me wants to be Roy McAvoy, the driving range pro. And please don't tell Ernestine I said this, but Rene Russo, as Roy's psychiatrist love interest, is I'll just say something. She is something. Me as a psycho golfer, if only I had Rene Russo as my shrink, I, I might break 80. Then again, Ernestine shocked me actually when I asked her which movie she could watch over and over again. With her answer, I didn't see this one coming. She said, Die Hard. You love, you would watch Die Hard over, I didn't even know that. She's watched it with me maybe 38 times, but I didn't think she would choose that. And yet she readily admitted to me, she's into that young Bruce Willis. She says that was his sexiest, his coolest, his baddest. That moonlighting phase, Bruce Willis. And Silly me, I love Die Hard because I love watching John McClane outwit 
and outfight the bad guys led by Hans Gruber, to me the greatest villain ever in moviedom, because he's just so deliciously, diabolically evil, played by the late, great Alan Rickman. But Ernestine and I can look out our living room window and we can see Nakatomi Plaza, which is actually on Avenue of the Stars. It's the Fox Tower. I'm on the Fox lot here. But it's, it's why Die Hard is near and, and actually literally near and dear to our hearts because we can see the plaza. And obviously it takes place all in that plaza on Christmas Eve. Yet, just for the record, she and I do love our classic comedies, and we could watch these over and over, Caddyshack, Blazing Saddles, any of the Inspector Clouseau Pink Panther movies, but in the end, we both agreed if we had to pick just one over and over and over again, it would be Anchorman, because it so hilariously and brilliantly skewers and satirizes the TV business I live in and Ernestine knows so well. I, I have worked with several Ron Burgundies. I'm talking about pompous blowhards made for TV who take themselves way too seriously, but it works on TV. I, I got to tell you, the hit rate for jokes in Anchorman is the highest of any comedy ever in my view. I hope you enjoyed that video. You ready for more? Make sure you click that subscribe button for all the exclusive content from The Skip Bayless Show. And don't forget to check out the full episode of the show wherever you get your podcasts by clicking the link in the description.